Attention! This video is made for scientific and educational purposes. The video does not violate YouTube's rules. Link to the document with links to the original video and quotes in the description. Hi! Today we will tell you about cluster bombs. We will talk about their development, the types of cluster bombs, the history of combat use in various military conflicts, and much more. You can find the time codes in the description and in the pinned comment. We remind you that this video is of a scientific and educational nature and does not violate the rules of YouTube. Link to the document with links to all video sources and quotes in the description. A cluster munition is a form of air-dropped or ground-launched explosive weapon that releases or ejects smaller submunitions. Commonly, this is a cluster bomb that ejects explosive bomblets that are designed to kill personnel and destroy vehicles. Other cluster munitions are designed to destroy runways or electric power transmission lines, disperse chemical or biological weapons, or to scatter land mines. Some submunition-based weapons can disperse non-munitions, such as leaflets. We will talk about this in more detail later. Because cluster bombs release many small bomblets over a wide area, they pose risks to civilians both during attacks and afterwards. Unexploded bomblets can kill or maim civilians and unintended targets long after a conflict has ended, and are costly to locate and remove. Who do you think created the first cluster bomb? Put the video on pause and write in the comments, let's see how many people respond correctly. The first cluster bomb used operationally was the German SD-2 or Sprengbomb Dickwandig 2 kg, commonly referred to as the butterfly bomb. It was used in World War II to attack both civilian and military targets. The technology was developed independently by the United States, Russia and Italy. The US used the 20LB M41 fragmentation bomb wired together in clusters of 6 or 25 with highly sensitive or proximity fuses. From the 1970s to the 1990s cluster bombs became standard air-dropped munitions for many nations, in a wide variety of types. They have been produced by 34 countries and used in at least 23. Artillery shells that employ similar principles have existed for decades. They are typically referred to as ICM, Improved Conventional Munitions, shells. The US military slang terms for them are firecracker, or popcorn, shells, for the many small explosions they cause in the target area. What types of cluster bombs exist? There are seven main types. Incendiary, anti-personnel, anti-tank, mine-laying, chemical weapons, anti-electrical and leaflet dispensing. Now about each type in a little more detail. Incendiary cluster bombs are intended to start fires, just like conventional incendiary bombs, firebombs. They contain submunitions of white phosphorus or napalm, and can be combined anti-personnel and anti-tank submunitions to hamper firefighting efforts. In urban areas they have been preceded by the use of conventional explosive bombs to fracture the roofs and walls of buildings to expose their flammable contents. One of the earliest examples is the so-called Molotov bread basket used by the Soviet Union in the Winter War of 1939-40. Incendiary clusters were extensively used by both sides in the strategic bombings of World War II. They caused firestorms and conflagrations in the bombing of Dresden in World War II and the firebombing of Tokyo. Some modern bomb submunitions deliver a highly combustible thermobaric aerosol that results in a high-pressure explosion when ignited. Anti-personnel cluster bombs use explosive fragmentation to kill troops and destroy soft targets. Along with incendiary cluster bombs, these were among the first types of cluster bombs produced by Nazi Germany during World War II. They were used during the Blitz with delay and booby trap fusing to hamper firefighting and other damage control efforts in the target areas. They were also used with a contact fuse when attacking entrenchments. These weapons were widely used during the Vietnam War when many thousands of tons of submunitions were dropped on Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam. Most anti-armor munitions contain shaped charge warheads to pierce the armor of tanks and armored fighting vehicles. In some cases, guidance is used to increase the likelihood of successfully hitting a vehicle. Modern guided submunitions, such as those found in the US CBU-97, can use either a shaped charge or an explosively formed penetrator. Unguided shaped charge submunitions are designed to be effective against entrenchments that incorporate overhead cover. 
To simplify supply and increase battlefield effectiveness by allowing a single type of round to be used against nearly any target, submunitions that incorporate both fragmentation and shape charge effects are produced. Submunition-based mines do not detonate immediately, but behave like conventional land mines that detonate later. These submunitions usually include a combination of anti-personnel and anti-tank mines. Since such mines lie exposed on surfaces, the anti-personnel forms, such as the U.S. Area Denial Artillery Munition normally deploy tripwires automatically after landing to make clearing the minefield more difficult. In order to avoid accumulating large areas of impassable battlefield, and to minimize the amount of mine clearing needed after a conflict, scatterable mines used by the United States are designed to self-destruct after a period of time from 4 to 48 hours. The internationally agreed definition of cluster munitions being negotiated in the Oslo process may not include this type of weapon, since landmines are already covered by other international treaties. During the 1950s and 1960s, the United States and Soviet Union developed cluster weapons designed to deliver chemical weapons. The Chemical Weapons Convention of 1993 banned their use. Six member nations declared themselves in possession of chemical weapons. The US and Russia are still in the process of destroying their stockpiles, having received extensions of the time limit for full destruction. They were unable to complete the destruction of their chemical weapons stockpiles by 2007, as the treaty originally required. An anti-electrical weapon, the CBU-94B, was first used by the US in the Kosovo War in 1999. These consist of a tactical munitions dispenser, filled with 202 Blue 114B, soft bomb, submunitions. Each submunition contains a small explosive charge that disperses 147 reels of fine conductive fiber of either carbon or aluminum coated glass. Their purpose is to disrupt and damage electric power transmission systems by producing short circuits in high voltage power lines and electrical substations. On the initial attack, these knocked out 70% of the electrical power supply in Serbia. The LBU-30 is designed for dropping large quantities of propaganda leaflets from aircraft. Enclosing the leaflets within the bomblets ensures that the leaflets will fall on the intended area without being dispersed excessively by the wind. The LBU-30 consists of SUU-30 dispensers that have been adapted to leaflet dispersal. The dispensers are essentially recycled units from old bombs. The LBU-30 was tested at Eglin Air Force Base information, and when in fact they were used last time exactly no one knows. Based on the list of combat applications, cluster bombs are popular among the military. Here is a list of combat uses of cluster bombs. Vietnam's War, Western Sahara War, 1975-1991, Soviet-Afghan War, 1979-1989, Falklands War, Nagorno-Karabakh War, 1992-1994, 2016, First Chechen War, 1995, Yugoslavia, 1999, Afghanistan, 2001-2002, Iraq, Lebanon, 1978, 1982 and 2006, Georgia, 2008, Libya, 2011 Syria 2012, South Sudan 2013, Ukraine 2014, Yemen 2015. If you want us to talk about the use of cluster bombs in a particular war, let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, put a like and share it on your social network so that more people will see it. Thanks. And we continue and let's talk about the convention on cluster bombs and the US policy on cluster bombs. Taking effect on August 1, 2010, the Convention on Cluster Munitions bans the stockpiling, use and transfer of virtually all existing cluster bombs and provides for the clearing up of unexploded munitions. It had been signed by 108 countries, of which 38 had ratified it by the affected date, but many of the world's major military powers including the United States, Russia, Brazil and China are not signatories to the treaty. The Convention on Cluster Munitions entered into force on 1 August 2010, six months after it was ratified by 30 states. As of 26 September 2018, a total of 120 states have joined the convention, as 104 states parties and 16 signatories. Now you can see the updated list of countries participating in the Convention on Cluster Bombs. Another 15 states have signed, but not ratified the convention. In May 2008, then-acting Assistant Secretary of State for Political Military Affairs Stephen Mull stated that the U.S. military relies upon cluster munitions as an important part of their war strategy. 
These are his words. Cluster munitions are available for use by every combat aircraft in the U.S. inventory, they are integral to every army or marine maneuver element and in some cases constitute up to 50% of tactical and direct fire support. U.S. forces simply cannot fight by design or by doctrine without holding out at least the possibility of using cluster munitions. U.S. arguments favoring the use of cluster munitions are that their use reduces the number of aircraft and artillery systems needed to support military operations and if they were eliminated, significantly more money would have to be spent on new weapons, ammunition, and logistical resources. Also, militaries would need to increase their use of massed artillery and rocket barges to get the same coverage, which would destroy or damage more key infrastructures. The U.S. was initially against any CCW negotiations but dropped its opposition in June 2007. Cluster munitions have been determined as needed for ensuring the country's national security interests, but measures were taken to address humanitarian concerns of their use, as well as pursuing their original suggested alternative to a total ban of pursuing technological fixes to make the weapons no longer viable after the end of a conflict. In July 2012, the U.S. fired at a target area with 36 guided multiple launch rocket system unitary warhead rockets. Analysis indicates that the same effects could have been made by four cluster GMLRS rockets. If cluster weapons cannot be used, the same operation would require using nine times as many rockets, cost nine times as much $400,000 compared to $3.6 million, and take 40 times as long 30 seconds compared to 20 minutes to execute. The U.S. suspended operational use of cluster munitions in 2003, and the U.S. Army ceased procurement of GMLRS cluster rockets in December 2008 because of a submunition dud rate as high as 5%. Pentagon policy was to have all cluster munitions used after 2018 to have a submunition unexploded ordnance rate of less than 1%. To achieve this, the Army undertook the Alternative Warhead Program to assess and recommend technologies to reduce or eliminate cluster munition failures, as some 80% of U.S. military cluster weapons reside in Army artillery stockpiles. On 30 November 2017, the Pentagon put off indefinitely their planned ban on using cluster bombs after 2018, as they had been unable to produce submunitions with failure rates of 1% or less. Since it is unclear how long it might take to achieve that standard, a month's long policy review concluded the deadline should be postponed. Deployment of existing cluster weapons is left to commander's discretion to authorize their use when deemed necessary, until sufficient quantities of safer versions are developed and fielded. This was the history of cluster bombs. Write in the comments what you think about cluster bombs and their combat use. And of course subscribe to our channel not to miss new videos about the history of weapons. I'll see you soon. Bye.